Before we start, tune your bass so you're in the same tuning as the recording. You'll need to tune each string up by six microtones, and you can see how I'm doing this on my tuner. This will make the E string, for example, halfway between an E and an F. As a tip to get that punchy, buzzy sound on the recording, if you have two pickups, you can play over the top of the back pickup. Today I want to go through the main things that I find as a teacher that beginners struggle with. And this track is never as easy as people think. So here's the main bass line. One, two, three, four. In learning the main bass line, there are three areas that you need to focus on to make it as perfect as possible. The opening E, the fast 16th note into the second bar, and the short note run. You can see that there are a load of dots over the notes, and these are staccato notes, which means that these notes need to be played short, which presents a bit of a technical challenge, which I'll go through today. For the first three notes, you need to get them as punchy as possible. In between the notes, I'm silencing the strings by pressing my left hand fingers against the strings straight after I pluck the notes with my right hand. As a beginner, this will be a tough thing to do to get the balance right and not press too softly so that the notes aren't stopping or pressing them too loudly so you get these accidental notes. So as a tip, use all four fingers of your fretting hand at the same time to stop the note and make sure they're applying even pressure. And you also need to make the length of each note the same. Part two, beginners struggle to place this 16th note, which is a note with the two lines behind it on the correct beat. Often this note is too early or too late, but it's really worth putting the effort in and getting this rhythm right, as these kind of 16th note rhythms are really fundamental to funk. So I'll put the metronome on and three tips here. Number one, practice this really slowly. And I mean like sloth like slow. Number two, always tap foot. And I'm stomping my foot just so you can see it more clearly. And number three, always count out loud. I find that when people count out loud, they develop their rhythm much more quickly than people who don't. And the count is, a one and two, three, four. A one and two. Three, four. You need to work through it slowly, speeding up the metronome little by little as you go along. It's just not that interesting watching me practice it. Yeah, so I lost my voice since I record the video, but now I sound a bit like a radio announcer. Hello out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there it is. So we have these three notes here, and I'm gonna use a Mandel technique, which means I'm gonna use my index on the third fret, but try and combine my pinky and my ring finger on the fifth fret. Most beginners, especially those coming over from a guitar background, will wanna play one finger per fret. But it is useful building up your skills with the semantal technique because there are many movements around the fretboard where using the semantal technique is easier, especially fifths and octaves. So this is what that part sounds like. And you can see here after I play that final note, I'm using my right hand as well as a combination of my left hand to mute the strings. And one thing you just want to avoid doing is going like. Like a lot of beginners will want to slap those strings. So just don't slap the strings. Now with everything I'm going through today, I'm using more advanced techniques and they're useful for beginners to know. But if this is one of your first bass lines and you just want to have fun, play it however you want, play it upside down because as you play more, you develop more control over your fingers and more advanced techniques will become easier and you don't want to kill your enthusiasm with your first song. And never forget, it's going to take a long time for your fingers to do exactly what you want them to do because they're not naturally programmed to do these kind of movements in the first place. Sorry, can we get back to the bass line? The intro is different than the main riff. That's right, the intro has this extra couple of notes and it sounds like this now to get the speed on that faster section I would practice using alternate plucking which as the name suggests is alternating your plucking fingers so I can't just use one finger honestly it's going to be very difficult to get the speed and accuracy using one finger and the part at the end of the chorus is different as well, right? Uh, yes, four eyes it is. What? 
In the chorus, John Deacon is playing the main riff, but at the end, there is this section. For this section, I'm, I'm shifting from the second fret up to the seventh fret using the Samandal technique. And you can see here I'm using my pinky and index together. And be careful with getting the rhythm correct. And then after that, I go back to the second fret. Two, three, and I do a bend. And you've got to do that kind of slowly. And the bridge part? Oh yeah, let's listen to that. This bridge section is the toughest part of the song for beginners. Let's focus on the first bar because the techniques are pretty similar throughout. You can see the staccato notes, which mean the notes which need to be played short, but there are also these symbols, which are called rests and mean that we need to have a short period of silence between the notes. Now the technique for both staccato notes and the rest notes are similar. And this technique of muting can be used in other parts of the song as well. So if I have the first note, which is a C, you can see what I do to play it is I press it down and then I release the note, but I keep my finger touching the string. And then at the same time, I'm putting these other fingers down to also assist in kind of stopping the note. And that kind of gives that punchy sound. Any kind of funk punchiness is a good thing. Now for the other notes, I'm once again using the cemental technique. So I'm playing these notes as index finger, middle finger, and pinky. And I'm on that note here, on this, on this G, on the D string, I'm having to kind of drag my pinky finger down there. Now, on, on my plucking fingers, I'm alternate plucking all the way through. And generally, as you kind of move up the bass, like the, the, when the notes go up, even though physically you're kind of going down, you want to kind of maintain that that alternate plucking thing, and just kind of helps speed up, build up your speed. And that alternate plucking is gonna be a real challenge for any beginner to master. It's gonna take months and months and months. But it's, it's time well invested, because the faster that you can control that alternate plucking, the faster you're gonna progress. Cool, thanks for showing me this, but what do I do with it now? Well, first of all, you can like the video and subscribe for more like this. But after that, I would practice each part slowly and play along to an online tab version. And I'll link some of these in the video description. A big thanks to all my Patreons, and an extra big thanks to my VIP patron. And I think you're going to like this video.